can come here. He just can't go inside. <laughs> Some dog owners are out hundreds of dollars after a park closes. Why the facility was in legal trouble from day one. Tom Horner's feeling confident in the final weeks of the campaign. Why he says the governor's race is now a two-person showdown. And a former Viking star wearing purple again this season. How fans feel about the return of Randy Moss. Fox 9 News at 9 starts now. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Some dog owners in New Hope are crying foul tonight. A local dog park has been shut down, and some folks are now out a lot of money. And Fox 9's Leah Bino joins us live from New Hope with more on the many problems this park's owner is facing. Leah? Yes, when we came here just a couple of hours ago, there was an eviction notice on the door. Now there's a letter from the owner telling his customers to either email or call him with questions and to watch their email for new location information. But the people we talk to say they'll believe it when they see it. Dog owner after dog owner say they are disappointed by the sign on the doors of the Dog City Dog Park. He never, uh, never really gave us any information like that. You know, he kept a lot of things quiet. The Hennepin County Sheriff Department evicted the owner, Greg McWhorter, on Monday. Oh, my first thought is it's just sad for her. And it's getting pretty busy this morning. That's the Fox 9 Morning News previewed the indoor dog park earlier this year. Members paid to bring their pups here during cold Minnesota winters, complete with training camp and treadmill. I mean, it was a great idea, um, and it was going along real well, I thought. And then all of a sudden, bam, you know, this stuff started happening. But the New Hope building inspector says the owner was in violation of city ordinances since the day he opened last September. Nick Warder didn't have the proper conditional use permit to run a doggy daycare. He disagrees. Well, we don't have a doggy daycare. We never had a doggy daycare. We have what's called canine training camp. There was daycare three, at least three days a week. Okay. We talked to several dog owners who say they paid a year membership for access indoors and daycare, only to find the doors locked. I paid uh, $385 for the year. It's a dollar a day plus tax and that. Off camera, former employees say they had paychecks bounced and McWhorter wasn't paying rent. Those same employees suspect the money was going to McWhorter's legal expenses, which include a list of convictions, including theft and multiple DWIs, plus a recent probation violation. The DWIs and that doesn't really bother me any. It's just the dishonesty that he does with people. McWhorter says New Hope City ordinances are a nuisance, and he plans to move his business somewhere in Plymouth. It's hard enough to run a, run a, run a business and develop and grow a, an ever-expanding uh, business such as this, but you just don't need somebody kicking you, you know, for little things like that when you're on your way to doing great things for great people. So he, he owes people an explanation, an apology, and he owes people money. That's sad. The New Hope building inspector tells us this sign is just one of several ordinance violations that they are currently trying to collect money for. They say the owner here owes them about $250 in fines. And coming up at 10, we'll share with you what some of those other ordinance violations are, which includes who is living here. Wow, Leah, too bad all around. How many people are out of money after all of this? Well, we're not really sure because some of them tell us they pay on a month-to-month -month basis and others took advantage of a recent special, so they paid a year or 18 months in advance. But the owner told us over the phone that he has about 400 customers. What are these people going to do now, did they say? Well, a lot of them are taking advantage of the beautiful weather and taking their dogs to outdoor dog parks right now. But the spokesman for the attorney general told us the best thing that these people can do is make some sort of claim so that they have document in place to see what happens from here. Yeah, learn from this. Leah Bino live in New Hope tonight. Thanks, Leah. You're welcome. You decide 2010, just under four weeks to Election Day. But one of the candidates says the race for governor is really down to just two. Now here's the twist. It's coming from Tom Horner, who shows up a distant third in all the polls. Fox 9's Bill Keller has more. Despite the fact that Tom Horner is trailing in the polls, the third party candidate is coming out swinging, predicting that the general election will come down to him and DFL candidate Mark Dayton. The trend lines are pretty clear that we've been climbing up and that one candidate in the race, um, Representative Emmer, has had not only trouble reaching out to independents and to other voters, but his base is contracting. While the Independence Party candidate is gaining support, political science professor Catherine Pearson says it's clear he stands to take voters from both sides, 
but how much is up for debate. Tom Horner has strategic incentives to say that this is a two-person race because, of course, he wants voters who may be inclined to support him but are concerned about wasting their vote to think that he really is right up there uh, in a two-person race. Horner's strategy has been to attract voters disaffected by two divisive parties. He continues to chip away at the very edges of Emmer's base but he also wants to win for his own ideals. I think what we need to do and what's incumbent on this campaign over the next four weeks is to continue building that momentum and, and just encourage people, you know, vote for the best candidate. Don't vote out of fear. Now, only time will tell as to how much ground that uh, Horner can make up in the polls. Right now, I am joined by Tony Sutton, chairman of the Minnesota Republican uh, Party. Thanks for joining us. What do you think about the fact that you've got Tom Horner here, the underdog, essentially ruling out your candidate, one of the front runners. Well, I, I think he's, uh, frankly, think he's all wet. Tom Horner is, is a lot like Mark Dayton. He wants to raise taxes. He wants to increase spending. In this race for governor, we got two left of center candidates, Mark Dayton, Tom Horner, two peas in a pod. They both voted for Obama. They both want to raise taxes. We've got one fiscal conservative in the race, Tom Emmer. I like our chances in that environment. So is he really a spoiler or is he a contender? And if so, will he take more votes from the Republicans or the Democrats? I think at the end of the day, he's going to take more votes from the Democrats uh, than, than from, from Tom Emmer. And the reason for that is he's talking about a lot of the same things. He wants to increase spending. He wants to increase taxes. And that's the same message that Mark Dayton has. And so at the end of the, end of the day, they're fighting over the same pool of people. We're, at, we're attracting people, frankly, who are concerned about keeping taxes down, growing jobs, and getting government smaller. Well, I mean, right now, does Tom Emmer, does he need to or is he changing his strategy? I mean, is he focusing on his base or is he working on keeping some of those uh, undecided voters? Well, frankly, he's working on what people are worried about in Minnesota. That's their jobs. And his is the only plan that doesn't raise taxes. And if you want to increase jobs in Minnesota, you don't increase taxes on people who create those jobs. That's what Tom Horner wants to do. That's what Mark Dayton wants to do. Tom Emmer's charting a different course, and of course that will mean more jobs. So there's no need to change strategy. There's just a need to keep promoting our message. But part of his thing from, you see those TV commercials, the far right and the far left, he's, he, he's going after his own base. He's got supporters, but again, he's also working about those, those disenfranchised Republicans and Democrats. Well, I think he's pursuing a strategy that at the end of the day is not going to work because he's talking about the same thing Mark Dayton's talking about, mm -hmm. increasing taxes, increasing spending. And so he may want to be a, sort of a wolf in sheep's clothing and say, oh, I'm a fiscal conservative. He's not. He voted for Barack Obama. His support comes from the left. Uh, his philosophy comes from the left. There's only one candidate who's talking about keeping government small, increasing jobs, and cutting taxes. That's Tom Emmer. You know, well, certainly a lot of Minnesotans also voted for uh, Barack Obama. But you made some controversial comments today uh, based on this uh, about Republicans who support Horner. Are you... Uh, what do you really think about some of these card-carrying Republicans who are essentially crossing party lines? Well, I tell you, those aren't necessarily card-carrying Republicans. Those people, a lot of those folks haven't supported the Republican Party or its candidates in a long time. They represent a bygone age in the Republican Party, sort of the party of the country club, the party of, of bigger government, more taxes, the party of the permanent minority. And frankly, there's a reason why they're former Republican legislators, is because they're not part of the Republican Party today that's been successful in keeping taxes low. And if you want to continue Governor Pawlenty's agenda of keeping taxes down, increasing jobs, you've got to vote for Tom Emmer and not worry about what these guys from the past are thinking about. All right, Tony Sutton, chairman of the Minnesota Republican Party, thanks for joining us. We'll throw it back to you guys in the studio right now. All right, Bill, and everybody at home, be sure to join us Saturday night at 6. Fox 9 is going to bring you Minnesota's next leader, the debate in the race for governor. And we're going to be broadcasting live from Hamlin University with all three candidates for one hour of commercial free debating. Former President Jimmy Carter comes to the Twin Cities to help build and renovate homes for Habitat for Humanity. The former president touring the Hawthorne Eco Village in North Minneapolis this morning where volunteers are building five homes. This is the 27th year that Mr. Carter and his wife have teamed up for Habitat projects around the world. Tonight on Fox at 10, hear from the former president and one of the people who's moving into these new